Use algebra to find the point at which the line blah intersects blah. All right. So remember, anytime, oh, by the way, check out the prior one in the playlist. I went through a detailed uh, explanation of how to visualize this pictorially using a graph. All right. So this one, we're just going to use the algebra to help us find it. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this equation. I'm going to write it in red, but instead of writing f of x, remember, you can always just simply write y. So y will then be equal to negative 4 over 5 x plus 274 divided by 25. I know it looks intimidating. Same thing here. We have now y will then be equal to 9 over 4 x plus 73 over 10. Okay, I have two equations now. And we want to find the point at which they intersect. Now the key, the really, the big key word here is the point at which they intersect. What that means in math speak is that any time two lines intersect, they will have, they will intersect at a common point, right? What that means is that that point is in common. The X and the Y, whatever that point of intersection is, is the same for both of these equations, right? Just visualize it for a second. Pretend you had a slanted graph and, and you had a, you know, a red line here, the red line's there, the blue line's here. Where do they intersect? Do they intersect right at this particular point? That point has a coordinate to it, some x and some y to it, right? And it just so happens that at that particular location, the blue line's coordinate, which is that, is exactly equal to the red line's coordinate, which is that same point. That would not be true for any other point on either of the two lines, right? This point here, is that common amongst the blue and the red? No, it's on the blue line. It's not similar to the red at all, right? So that's the significance of the term intersects. Whenever you hear that, you know you will know that whatever the x value is of this particular point of intersection is the same as the x-coordinate for the red line and the x-coordinate for the blue line. Similarly, the y-coordinate of this point will be the same for the red line as well as for the blue line. Okay, so now let's clean that up a little bit. And let's now try to do some algebra and basically apply the meaning of that word intersection. What that means, again, is that the y value of this equation, right, the y coordinate value of this equation, remember the x and y here represent pairs of coordinates on the line. So on that red line, this would be a y value and that would be the x, okay? And we, and we said before that the y value of the red line at the point of intersection will be equal to the y value of the coordinate of the blue line. So, what that now means is that the red y's value at that particular point will equal the blue y's value at that point. Notice now, all I did was I took the understanding of the word intersection. I created a very, very simple math equation from this, right? We're saying that the red y will equal the blue y, and that is true, right? Because the coordinate of the point of intersection has the common y. Now, you might say, well, where the, what the heck am I going to do now? Well, there's nothing to do here. Well, that's correct. But that means all we got to do now, if we know this equation to be true, we can maybe do some substitutions. So think about it this way. If I said that A is equal to C, and A here is equal to D, and you know this is A and this is A, meaning they're equal, what can you then say about the relationship between C and D? They're equal as well, right? If A equals C and A equals D, then C equals D. So that's the same idea. That's the logic. That means that this particular part of the first equation will equal this particular part of the second equation. So instead of writing Y equals Y, I'm going to write blah equals blah now. And I'll write it in the colors. So I'm going to have negative 4 fifths X plus 274 all over 25. That now must equal the blue part of 9 over 4 x plus 73 over 10. Now take a step back. What do we have? 
we have an equation with one unknown. Now we can start solving. Okay, if you solve this equation for x, what you're solving for is the common is the x value that is in common amongst these two lines. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we just got to combine like terms and get all the variable, you know, get the unknown onto one side, everything else on over to the other. So don't let the fractions scare you. Okay, it's just like working with numbers, and we're going to use a calculator here. All right plus four over five, so bring the x, bring the negative, you know, add the four fifths on, uh, from the left side on over to the right. Similarly, at the same time, I know I gotta bring this then on over to the left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract the 73 over 10, and then I'm gonna subtract the 73 over 10, okay? And we realize that this goes bye-bye on the left, and this goes bye-bye on the right. So what are we left with? Well, now just plug this on into the calculator. All right, so 274, I'm too tired to do all the fractions. So, <laughs> So 274 divided by 25 uh, minus then, careful, minus 73 over 10. And we get a value of about 3.66, okay? So what I'm gonna do now over here is I'm gonna write 3.66 is gonna be equal to then, take the 9 fourths and add 4 fifths to it now. 9 over 4 plus 4 over 5. And we get about 3.05, right? 3.05, and that, don't forget about the x. Okay, so it's 3.05 times x. Now, how do you solve this simply for x? Well, that's easy, right? Just divide out the 3.05 from both sides. Divide out the 3.05 from both sides, and we realize now that x will be equal to 3.66 divided by 3.05, and we get a value of 1.2. 1 1.2, all right? You can convert that back into a fraction, leave it as a decimal. It doesn't really give me any guidance on that, so this should be fine. Now. If we know the x value, remember, we got to find the point. So we know the x, how do we find the y? This turns out that we can simply now take this x and plug it into either equation. It doesn't matter, because if we know these x's are the same, then, and we know that the point of intersection is where the y's are also the same, hopefully then, if you plugged in this one, uh, 1 1.2 into either equation here and here, then the y's would work out to be identically, or identical to one another. And that would be true. Test it out for yourself, all right? I'm only gonna choose the, uh, it doesn't matter, I'm gonna choose the blue one to do this. And what I'm gonna have to do here is clean it up a little bit. Clean up, clean up, everybody, everywhere. So I just, I, <laughs> it's how I get my children to clean up, right? It's so much fun if, if you sing a song. Maybe we should figure out a song for like algebra here. Maybe it'd be a lot more interesting. Um, yeah, so y is equal to nine over four x, plus 73 over 10. What I'm simply now going to do is take the x value and plug that on in for x. I'm gonna solve now for my y, and voila, we're gonna find out what it is. So I'm gonna take nine divided by four, multiply it by 1.2, then add to that 73 over 10, and we get a value of exactly 10, okay? So now you know the x and you know the y, so what's the point? Just put it together now in a coordinate form. 1.2 comma 10, and that's it. Again, if you needed to convert that into a fractional form, the decimal there, you obviously could, all right? So now, let's take a look at the second example. Let's see how quickly we can fly through it. All right, so it says use al algebra to find the point at which this particular line intersects this particular line. So first thing is, take each line and rewrite it uh, with a y instead of f of x. Just makes it easier. So 457 over 60. Okay, great. I'm gonna do the other one in blue. So y is equal to four over three, x plus 31 over five. Now I realize if they're intersecting, right? Remember the keyword is intersecting. That means that they're going to have a common x and y value. So again, I can simply set my red y on equal to my blue y. And then I can use the same logic as before. Then that means this part of the red equation must equal this part of the blue equation. So let's write that on out now. So this is seven over four x plus 457 over 60. And that's then going to equal four over three x plus 31 over five. Now, simply do algebra, okay? Let's get the, uh, let's get the x's on by itself. It doesn't matter which way we, we go here. Uh, so why don't we simply subtract this four thirds x on over to the left 
And then what I'm going to do is bring this on over to the right. So then I got to subtract that since it's positive, right? 457 over 60 minus 457 over 60. Cancel the terms that should cancel out. And now what are you then left with? Well, let's do it in the calculator. Well, actually, I mean, do we really need for this one? We might on the second part. Yeah, you know what? Let's just use the, let's just use the calculator. So 7 over 4, why not, right? The uh, minus then uh, 4 over 3. And we get a value of about, now that decimal kind of works out to be a little, uh, oh no, what am I talking, yeah. So this works out to be about, sorry, I'm getting distracted. Let me just make sure, yeah. So this works out to be about 4.41, six looks like repeating okay that's going to be x and that's going to equal now let's do the other side so 31 over 5 minus now 457 over 60 and that works out to be now let me just move this on over slightly that works out to be now negative 1.416 and that's repeating okay how do we solve this for x now simply divide out the 0. 0.416 repeating from both sides Right. You can take that then if you like and then plug that on into your calculator. And then what are we going to get there? We're going to get about th negative 3.4. Okay, negative 3.4. Then you can always convert that now into a decimal. Uh, well, no, it's in a decimal. Convert that into a fraction. Okay. Now since I know the um, x value, clean up, clean up, everybody everywhere, clean up, clean up everybody do your share plug in that x value into any y uh, e part of the equation okay so y is going to be equal to let's select the blue 4 over 3 x plus 31 over 5 so y then will be 4 over 3 times then the negative 1 uh, negative 3.4 plus then 31 over 5 and voila simply plug that on into the calculator so 4 over 3 times then negative 3.4 plus 31 over 5, and it works out to about 1.6 repeating, okay? And again, you can take that and convert that into a uh, fraction if you like, okay? So this now should work out to the x value is going to be negative 3.4 comma 1.6 repeating. Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. If this video helped you out at all, if you wouldn't mind helping us out, telling your friends, um, hitting the subscribe button and the like button, all right? Uh, we really do look forward to helping you with more problems. I hope you have a great day.